Hello everybody and welcome to Chop and Brew. I am Chip Walton. In this episode, we're going back in time, about a year, to the Pacific Northwest Homebrewers Conference. This was a cool regional homebrew conference, two-day event that happened in Vancouver, Washington, March 2017. We were invited up to attend, document, and even present at the conference. Chop for Chop! Brew for Brew! Brew. As you're going to see, it's kind of like a, a mini version of the larger annual homebrew con, but I find it very timely to put it out still a year later because a lot of the organizers of the Pacific Northwest Homebrewers Conference are the same fine local folks that are behind homebrew con efforts for June of 2018. So we're going to take you behind the scenes. You're going to see what it takes to put on a small-ish regional homebrew conference, and we hope to inspire some other um, clubs and groups and regions to maybe try doing this on their own. In the second half of the episode we're going to Club Brews. That's their version of club night and you're gonna meet about a half dozen um, homebrew club members as they talk about the beer they were serving, about the community in the Pacific Northwest. It's a super good time. One shout out that has been waiting about a year to make. So while we were there a fan came up to us and gave us this super awesome piece of fan art. It is a little card drawn up by some little kids, specifically a little girl named Ember, who says, me and my sisters love Chop and Brew. And on the front, it's got the epic Chop and Brew main logo. And then on the back, a little love letter. It says Chip and Elsa inside of a heart. So Ember and your sisters, we're super excited to get stuff like this. It's been living on our beer fridge in the basement for about a year. So. Uh, keep it coming. Hope you're having a good time watching the show with your little shout out. Another quick note, Brian Adams and I will be in Portland, Oregon in the last weekend of April 2018. Uh, we're going into town to shoot some video with Imperial Yeast and F8 Steinbart, the homebrew shop who is celebrating their 100th anniversary this year. So come join us at F8 Steinbart in the afternoon of April 28th. We're going to be brewing up a beer, going to be hanging out, sampling homebrew. Uh, that's from like noon to four-ish on the 28th. One last note, if you like Chop and Brew and want to support our efforts for both the videos and future road trips such as this one coming up, please go to patreon.com slash chop and brew. Um, be a sustaining member supporter of Chop and Brew. There's a lot of fun rewards there too. There's a private Facebook group, there's early access to videos, there's recipes, uh, that aren't going to be posting publicly, or at least you'll get first access to them. So just, it's a way to support us, get something in return, and have a whole lot of fun. So, without further ado, let us go back in time to Vancouver, Washington, St. Patrick's Day weekend 2017 for the Pacific Northwest Homebrewers Conference. Hi, I'm Jill Marilli, and I'm the chair of the Pacific Northwest Homebrewers Conference for 2017. I've had a lot of fun doing this, primarily because it brings all the homebrewers in the area together. It was a common conversation throughout the region that all of the great speakers that would go to HomebrewCon for the American Homebrewers Association, a lot of them came from this area. So why not do something at a more local level for those folks that might not be able to take the time or the money to be able to travel to the national convention? Thought we'd do something small, maybe a few people would show up. I, I'm not sure that it would ever be necessary, but the way I get around that is by pitching an enormous yeast culture. And so back in 2015, we got started, had a few interested folks, made some plans. 2016, we executed it and we're completely blown away by how many people wanted to be here, wanted to learn and wanted to have fun together. So we thought we'd do it again. Hi, my name is Delaney Wardell and I am the Education Committee Chair. I would have told you it entailed very specific things if you would have asked me about a month and a half ago, though over the last day or so, it's encompassed uh, AV tech, uh, people management, uh, dealing with the cellar master, making sure beer gets where it's supposed to get to, 
uh, and generally running around like a chicken with my head cut off. My name is Adam Boyd and I'm here at the Pacific Northwest Homebrewers Conference uh, representing a number of different things. Uh, I'm working with the conference as media relations here and I'm also representing the Inland Brewers Unite Homebrew Club out of Spokane. I'm the president there and I'm also here with my radio show and podcast that is a craft beer centric uh, radio show called Good Brews. I feel like I'm kind of connected to a lot of different levels of the conference itself. I, I'm definitely here as a home brewer to learn a lot and attend a lot of the seminars but I'm also here to you know uh, talk with a lot of other brewers and pick up you know content for my own show and just connect with people as well so that's kind of one of the great things about this conference is not only is there a great beer and, and it's celebrating the hobby of homebrew but it's kind of a networking thing too you're meeting brewers from all over the Northwest and individuals who are plugged into the industry uh, from from every facet this conference is really based after the same pattern that the homebrew con follows there's a time for uh, interaction with pro brewers lots of education opportunities, and then a time for the clubs to show their best homebrew. I would compare it to like a mini homebrew con in many ways. It, it, it harnesses a lot of the same spirit. There's seminars and educational aspects. There's tons of opportunities to taste great beer. There's the networking as well, but it is a little bit more streamlined. You know, this is only a two-day event, uh, and it, I think it's very easy for you to be able to look at the schedule of seminars and, and pick a channel you want to take where sometimes on the larger scale, it can be a little overwhelming. Uh, there's just so much uh, offered. Well, we kind of go with the fire hose approach where we kind of just kind of open it up for anybody who wants to submit an idea for, for a topic or a conversation. So once the boil starts to, to uh, uh, subside some, that's when you, uh, you scream out, hot rocks. But and when you, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna turn the volume down because we were, I can't believe the things we were talking about when we were doing this. Um, <laughs> That kind of lets the gate open, people kind of flood in, you're gonna get lots of different ideas, and it starts giving you an idea of what is out there. Then you start to um, look at how you can fill the spots, uh, what kind of themes you can actually kind of create. We have uh, one track that's specifically around sours. We have another track that is specifically around kind of the, the business of brewing. This is true, we, we do have uh, topics and beer and sours and hops. <laughs> couple of different yeast places yeah so it's a good good place to kind of pull from and that's the other thing we thought about is like we have a lot of a lot of wealth of local knowledge and and so let's see if we can tap that isn't this a nice conference man it's hard to understand why more people aren't doing regional conferences like this I think every region should be doing this you know not everybody can afford to go to the homebrew con so regional conferences are a way to get a lot more homebrewers involved and something like this and we know that they're going to have a great time once they come to one so I, yeah i really think other regions should should be doing it gary has been here twice now and this committee is experienced so they have resources they can call on to help them pull it off you know it depends on the region it's what they need and what they want there's a huge amount of energy here in the northwest for home brewing and if it's something that that region thinks hey let's come together and and have that conversation have that conference one even started up in southeast missouri this past year because they'd heard about the success of ours so for me what i want is what's right for the area but I really see value in these regional conferences, not to replace the national one, but a regional one where you meet folks who have maybe the same water quality issues. You can learn how they're dealing with them. Maybe they have the same hop supplier issues and what they need for it. So it really depends on the group. Smell that aroma. Oh, wow. Isn't that nice? When it comes down to it, we wouldn't have a conference if it weren't for our vendors and our donors and the, the external uh, providers to home brewers uh, without them showing up and coming. So either whether it's through a donation or they come and actually have an exhibit here, we wouldn't be the PNWHC that we are. And this year, especially even more than last year, we've had some really high quality exhibitors, incredibly generous exhibitors. It seems like everybody leaves with a full goodie bag and an opportunity to meet directly with the suppliers, the suppliers of hops, the suppliers of anything that goes into homebrew. And maybe they'll go home with a bag of hops, bag of grain, or maybe even a new brew kettle. You got a little baby plant? I adopted a baby plant, Chip. This is Callie, the centennial. She's gonna go in my backyard. She'll be my first hop ever. I'm gonna love her and take care of her and then put her in beer. It's gonna be tasty, I hope. One of the coolest experiences I had this year with planning this 
is that I got my Brew Your Own magazine last, uh, last month. I opened it up and looking at like the governing bar body and then who's written, uh, written articles. And I'm like, I'm emailing with him, I'm emailing with him. I got his cell phone, she's coming. It's really kind of uh, flattened that uh, separation between kind of the, the big home brewers, the big brewers, and me as a, as a you know, as a small little home brewer. And that's actually one of the reasons, or one of the things I love most about kind of the national thing is that you can strike up a conversation with somebody you've been listening to on a podcast or, or reading you know, their articles or reading their books, and they will just have a conversation with you. I mean, just about beer. I mean, it's, it's like the, the, the great connector uh, for everyone. And that was something that you know, we didn't want to just, I personally didn't want to just wait until it came close enough that I could go to a national one again. So I was on board for doing this. Chip. Hi, buddy. Club Brews is going on tonight, and so that is, I think we have 24 to 30 uh, homebrew clubs from Washington, Oregon, Idaho. Uh, we have people coming down from uh, British Columbia and Canada who are just basically, they've, they've hauled their kegs, they've hauled their wares down. People are going to be wearing plumed hats more than likely. I know there's uh, one group that always dresses as pirates, and we have another one who's doing an Oregon Trail sort of spin-off. So it's kind of a, a time to kind of get together, be a little silly, be a little goofy, and share some really, really good beer. Be able to sit there and talk directly with the brewers. You know that whatever beer you're drinking, there's somebody right there who can say, oh yeah, well I mashed that at this temperature for this long. If you're trying to, oh, I really like this one flavor you got. How did you do that? Boom, right, right there. Somebody can uh, answer that question. So it's a great opportunity for us to kind of bond and uh, over our shared passion. PDX Brewers, uh, we're at the Pacific Northwest Home Brewers Conference, second year in a row, and uh, this, is, this is club night. So this is our booth, uh, Lemonade Stand meets Man Cave. We got movies, we got snacks, but most importantly, we got beer and friends. Uh, club, we're a very uh, casual club, um, education-based. There's a lot of different clubs, social and uh, competition. We're a little bit more education-based. So what we do is uh, every month we meet at a, a local pub and we have uh, people's choice where everybody brings in beers and we critique them, help each other with our recipes, but we also have an education piece too. So it's a, a real approachable club, doesn't matter if you're extract or uh, all grain, everybody's welcome. We have a really good brewer who does nothing but extract and he takes people's choice at monthly meetings at least once a quarter with his stuff. It's really tasty. Uh, this was a collaborative effort, collaborative effort for the Oregon Brew Crew. Um, Megan and I had the idea to do the Oregon Trail, T-R-A-L-E of course, and uh, so it was a throwback to both the video game from the 1980s as well as the original Emigrant Oregon Trail. And so we brought together the concept of the wagon, as you can see behind me. Beer wagon, that is. And then of course we have the video game on both the screen and on the computer. So it's sort of a hybrid of the two. And uh, just a good way to kind of pay tribute to those that crossed the, uh, the Western Hemisphere, <laughs> the Western- Portland or bust. Yes, exactly. I don't know if they were coming to Portland. West of the Mississippi. Yes. <laughs> West of Missouri. So the Oregon Brew Crew has been around almost 38 years. I think we'll be 40 years in 2019. And so we have 318 members. The club was founded by some really industry legendaries like Rob and Kurt Widmer, uh, uh, Bob Ponzi from Bridgeport Brewing, a number of other folks that have uh, really contributed to the growth of brewing in the Portland area. And uh, every meeting we have probably five or six new members that are coming in, which is great. And lots of female brewers. In fact, we just supported She Brew, uh, which is sponsored by um, Oregon Brew Crew. And the Human Rights Council. And the Human Rights Council. And my wife is too shy to say she won a gold medal in the <laughs> She Brew competition. Uh, but it was uh, it was really big. We had a, like what over a hundred beers entered. So we had 127 entries. It was the largest female-only homebrew competition in the country. So we're very proud of that. My name is Josh Lopez. I'm out of Renton, Washington, and I'm uh, supporting the Impaling Ailers. Today on tap, we got a wide variety of beers. Um, I'm going to talk about the Pumpernickel Rye Ale. Uh, this was part of our internal club competition. Uh, we do an event called Iron Brewer, uh, where we select various recipes or ingredients, um, and then you need to use the ingredient anywhere in the brewing process. The ingredient was pumpernickel rye bread, and I decided to use it in the mash. 
before putting it into the mash, I toast it in the oven for about an hour, hour and a half, and then chopped it up into small little pieces. I started with uh, a recipe that I've done quite often. It was uh, an Irish red ale. Um, but I reduced some of the specialty grains and the hops uh, so that uh, I can have some of the bread characters come forward. I, I didn't know what to expect, but, uh, <laughs> but it, it worked out pretty good. The, the pumpernickel rye bread you know, brings some sweetness, a little bit of spiciness from the rye, um, and, and overall, it's a decent beer. And so it's something that I, I would drink again. I don't know, necessarily know if I would brew it again, but. <laughs> My name is Keith Ciani. This is Alex Maffeo. We're in the South Sound Suds Society, Olympia, Washington. <laughs> we are all about peace and love and good beer, ales and lagers. What do we bring tonight? What'd you brew, Alex? What'd you make? I brewed an amber lager that's pretty amber, sort of kind of amber, but it turned out really good. What'd you call it? Velvet Elvis. What did I bring tonight, Alex? It would be a Pro-Am Schwartz beer. GABF 2016 Schwartz beer with fish, brewed with fish from Olympia. They found it in the freezer from a long time ago, and the uh, head brewer, Paul, called me up and said, I found an old keg of the uh, Pro-Am. Do you want it? I said, yes. It's hanging on pretty good. We're not strict. We don't have uh, we don't have bylaws and rules. We pretty much just get together once a month and drink beer and talk about beer. We don't really have a... Uh, there's no treasurer. There's no... Uh, we do have a treasurer. We do? Yeah. That's great. We do. We have a president, vice president, treasurer, right. secretary. It's just somebody to handle right. the money and kind of keep track of where things are. But... But they, our club works really hard. Ken Reister, Karen Reister, and everybody works very hard. Yeah. They did a lot to get the Pacific Northwest Homebrewers Conference going last year. They did a lot of the planning, a lot of the beer tours. And we've got a lot of good brewers at our club. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the water. <laughs> it's artisanal. It's the water. <laughs> it really is the water. Cheers. Cheers. Chop for chop. Brew for brew. For brew. Our club is uh, Drib Pro Quo. And that means uh, drinkers with brewing problem quorum. Um, there's uh, about 14 brewers and their wives, and uh, we meet in uh, Chemist, Washington, Vancouver. We have a, we call it the experiment. A friend of mine that owns 5440 Brewery gave us uh, two full barrels, 72 gallons of beer, and 12 of us, we, we split it up 12 ways, that I call the great folks over in Imperial Yeast. And they gave us uh, a bunch of different kinds of yeast. We have a Thai lemongrass saison. We have a raspberry habanero. We have um, an oak London. We have some Czech pills, a couple of Kolsch's. So there's a wide range. My name is Aaron Fernald. I'm in Inland Brewers Unite in Spokane, Washington. Uh, we're the Spokane's biggest homebrew club since 2010. We've brought five or six beers. We've got sour, uh, gin barrel aged IPA, uh, Belgian IPA, uh, Cab Franc Belgian Triple, uh, Mango Berliner Weiss. In our area, I feel that the homebrewers really do drive the creativity and the commercial brewing. We work, uh, we're, we're getting better about working with local breweries. Uh, we did three pro-ams in 2016. Uh, and so this year we're already coming in in spring with our challenge. Uh, and one of, the, one of the best breweries in Spokane is taking on a pro-am with Iron Goat Brewing. So they'll be uh, picking of the, from the top five. Uh, we hope to have upwards of 30 entrants for that. Hey, so my name's Nathaniel. I'm a member of Van Brewers. We're from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Uh, we are, we're a home, homebrew club that's been there since uh, about 2009. Uh, we have over 200 members and we usually have about 60 people out to each meeting. Uh, we basically got together because a bunch of friends decided they wanted to learn how to make better beer and there's no other way to go, no other resources available to them. So they started the club just to kind of taste each other's beer and be a little bit judgy about it. Uh, today I brought a smoked potato chip porter. It's basically a robust porter that that has a little bit of smoked potato chips. I put two pounds of applewood smoked potato chips in the mash tun with about three ounces of beechwood smoked malt. The end result is a beer that smells like when you first open up a smoked potato chip or barbecue potato chip. And then the aroma is just a really, uh, really nice chocolatey porter with a hint of that sort of dirty campfire flavor. I rode an Amtrak train here, it took me about seven hours. It was great, I have a pretty busy day job and I run a brewery part time. 
Uh, so it was nice to kind of just sit there and relax and watch the world go by on my way down. Uh, so Alvaro's wife uh, came down and she brought all the stuff in her car. Uh, so I brought my uh, Pisco Kettle Sour. So a Pisco Sour is a, is a beverage made, or a cocktail made in Chile, Peru with uh, Pisco, which is a grape brandy, lemon juice, and uh, egg white, and it's shaken. So I deconstructed those flavors and reconstructed them into a beer. Some uh, grape notes, which I, I attempted to get from uh, uh, using Hallertau Blanc uh, and uh, hops and a Kolsch yeast. And uh, lemony notes, uh, the kettle souring process was done with Lactobacillus plantarum, which is a probiotic, but I found it to be very lemony. Um, I didn't use egg white, but I, I did a no-boil process, which preserves some of the kind of raw kind of protein uh, flavors and mouthfeel. And I also added some pisco to the keg just to, you know, bring it over the top. This is a great conference for people who maybe have been thinking about uh, maybe someday I want to hit the, the homebrew con, the national homebrew conference. This is a great way to dip your toe in and really get a sense of what these conferences are all about. Uh, because, uh, you know, again, on top of the education and the opportunity to taste some really awesome beer from both professional brewers and home brewers, uh, there's just the camaraderie that's there. And it really is really about celebrating the hobby and just getting a chance to, to talk with other brewers who enjoy making beer just like you do. Uh, and looking uh, at the Pacific Northwest Home Brewers Conference now on its second year, uh, I just have to say I'm, I'm ultimately impressed with the volunteers uh, and particularly Jill Morilli, who is the chair of the Pacific Northwest Home Brewers Conference. The amount of work that goes into this for people who really just, they're home brewers that love home brewing and the hobby of home brewing, and they put a lot of their own time to put this conference on. And as someone who knows how much work goes into a public event like this, uh, th those people are heroes. Uh, and so if you see them around the conference or in the future, uh, you know, give them a hug and, and a beer for sure, because they earned it. It is becoming the meetup for the region. So much happens at an even more sub-local level. Maybe Seattle will get together or the state of Washington will get together. They, in fact, they do. They have a camp out every year. Or the state of Oregon will have an event. But this is that opportunity to bring the region together as a community. The Pacific Northwest Homebrewers Conference is completely volunteer run. And we consider ourselves a, a subset of the American Homebrewers Association. We want to support them. And so uh, we also don't want to burn our people out. So we're going to go to an every other year or every third year format. And that'll increase the excitement and participation and opportunity for folks to come to this. And so for whatever the reason, um, we'll get on to more of a cycle like that. So stay tuned, watch the Facebook site, watch the website. We'll have fun again. Other beers we have here, too. oh, hand pulls, check it out. We have some. You gotta have the mic. You gotta have two hands. <laughs> you need an assistant. We have, there we go. We have Best oh, Bitter, and we have uh, Dark Mild from Benji. That's Benji right there. Uh, great Cascales from our club. This is video gold right here. <laughs> can chop that on the editing floor. <laughs> That's part of chopping brew, right? Uh, and? <laughs> See what you can do with all that. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I don't know what comes out of my mouth sometimes. So I'm so, this is so funny. I didn't even say what I was to say, but you got it. This is proof positive that brew tang is for the children.